hello welcome all so today we'll be discussing about one case scenario let us see this case how it presented to us so like you can see here this patient was 30 year old woman was admitted to our inpatient hematology team for neutropenic fever after recent induction chemotherapy for leukemia aml she had been doing well on supportive therapy and broad spectrum iv antibiotic until she developed a worsening fever hypotension during resuscitation the above diffuse vesicular rash started appearing covering most of the body surface concern was raised for disseminated varicella because varicella also have vesicular rash so here vesicular rash was developing giving her profound immunocompromised state and lack of response to antibiotic she was started on iv acyclovir in addition to her previous broad spectrum antibiotics so what is the diagnosis and here is the image here you can see these are those vesicular eruptions which are very tiny small fluid fed lesions which are present over back trunk thighs so these are those lesions so this is the clinical presentation and this is the case of is it varicella so it was suggested that probably patient is developing so many fluid filled lesions that is vesicle so it could be varicella and patient was started on iv acyclovir but actually this is not a case of disseminated varicella but this is a case of malaria crystallina which presents with such tiny asymptomatic vesicular eruptions and malaria crystallina as you all know is due to occlusion of duct of e crying sweat gland so let us discuss this case in detail so what is malaria malaria is a disorder of e crying sweat gland and when there is blockage in the duct of e crying sweat gland it leads to malaria so let us consider that this is the skin this is the duct of e crying sweat gland and this is the coil portion of the gland so this is the duct this is the coil or the secretory portion and this duct directly opens over the skin okay so if there is blockage in this duct it can lead to this condition known as malaria now this malaria can be of multiple types like malaria crystallina it can be malaria rubra or it can be malaria profunda now how to differentiate these three remember that this depends on the blockage where the blockage is occurring so level of blockage so level of blockage in cases of crystallina is at the level of stratum corneum in rubra it is at the level of malpighian layer malpighian layer which is the lower epidermis that is stratum spinosum along with the stratum basale and in profunda it is much deeper that is at the level of dermo epidermal junction now this as the name it suggestive is rubra so here what happens there is spillage of the sweat due to the blockage and this leads to inflammation and that's why these appear red in color so these lesions are generally red and there is inflammation there so many a times these are itchy lesions and this is considered as the most common type of malaria now you might be wondering that what is the incidence of this condition so generally malaria crystallina is seen in neonates and their incidence is around 9% so in crystallina generally this redness and itching is absent and these appear very similar to these lesions which are seen in this image that is very tiny clear fluid filled vesicular eruptions while rubra appears red and there is inflammation and these lesions of malaria rubra are also known as heat rash or prickly heat okay so this is also associated with environmental factors like lot of heat or humid condition